guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to do something that I didn't really expect to do, and that is a bookshelf tour. So, as some of you guys probably know, we are in the process of trying to find a, another house and to sell ours, and while that's a lengthy process, that's, you know, inevitably going to happen and it could happen at any point. And because of that, I wanted to do a bookshelf tour on my, I guess you could call it a castle slash dollhouse looking bookshelf, the one that you usually see me in front of when I'm doing my videos, because this shelf, that shelf, probably won't come with us when we do move. And so I wanted to, you know, have a nice Donald kind of remembrance video of what my bookshelf was like um, because it's one that I've had since I was pretty young and so I figured that I would do a bookshelf tour on this shelf even though it's not necessarily going to be the most interesting because it's not my entire book collection and it's not very extensive but uh, I figured, you know, why not? I, so what I'm going to do is I'm things here as I go. I mean, but um, I think it would be best for me to just try my shelves here and just kind of what you're going to see in the overall tour. And then maybe explain a little bit about kind of how I organize my shelves. On the top right hand of the shelf and that pretty much just encompasses like random books that I've accumulated. They're not really in any specific order. Like I've got my um, my small like inspirational books, then I've got some sea life books, and then I've got a Scandinavian book that I saved from the library because they were going to get rid of it. And then I have my Barnes & Noble Collector's edition of the Iliad and the Odyssey. And then I also have a report that I did back in sixth grade about the Middle Ages and that's kind of just my origin story of how I got into all of that in the first place and so that's up there on my shelf too. That is my TBR shelf for the year. Every year I will just kind of put the, sh the books, the physical books that I have on that specific shelf and that has, right now it has Leonardo da Vinci and Poland and Persuasion. second shelf I have my entire Harry Potter collection and they're just all of my original copies. I have two that are signed which are the first and the third so Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So those are my two signed copies and I also have my special edition Ravenclaw edition. I got that last Christmas. And so to the middle left hand side that is like all kinds of books that I read with my mom or my grandma and they're just books that are kind of important like I've got my inscribed copy of um, all, all the places you will go by Dr. Seuss my grandma gave it to me for for my high school graduation and then I have um, chicken soup 
for the Mother and Daughter Soul and To My Daughter with Love by Susan Pola Schultz. And I have my Barnes & Noble Collector's Edition of The Divine Comedy by Dante, which, you know, looking back on it now, it's not my favorite edition, but, you know, I got it a long time ago, and so I'm glad I have it. Now I have this book called The Old Fashioned Storybook, and that is... It's been kind of been passed down through the generations of my family. I think it was originally my great grandmother's, and then she passed it to my grandma, then my grandma passed it down to my mom, and then I passed she passed it down to me. And it's just a book full of all kinds of fairy tales from all over the world, and I really, really enjoy those stories. They're just they bring back so many great memories. And then I have my fairy one of my flower fairy books because I went through a period of time where I was obsessed with fairies. And then my middle shelf is my entire Tolkien collection. So I've got Beowulf, The Silmarillion, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Lost Tales, The Children of Hurin, The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, and then I have like non-fiction-y books based on Tolkien's world or like kind of explaining his world. So I've got um, Myth, Morality, and Religion, and I've got those terrible Middle Ages then Bilbo's Journey, and then the World of Tolkien. But they're all centered around Middle Earth or just Tolkien in general. And then the middle right-hand shelf is starting my entire Realm of the Elderlings collection. I have my signed copy of Fool's Assassin, which my best friend gave to me for my birthday last year. When she went to Comic-Con, she met her and she got me a signed copy because she knows I'm a huge fan. And the reason she picked Fool's Assassin is because I'm a huge fan of The Fool. But you know, I hadn't also read that book at that point. And now just knowing what I know about that book, it's definitely an unusual book and it's also one of the most heartbreaking so I'm just like mm -hmm. so a mass market paperback which I generally just am not a fan of but it's a signed copy so I'm gonna keep it regardless um, then I have um, Assassin's Apprentice and Royal Assassin and those are on that shelf like in that specific portion of the shelf because they won't all fit on one shelf. Yeah. Go down to the very bottom shelf and that literally has all of the rest of the Realm of the Elderlings books as well as the coloring book which I'm excited that I have. And uh, I have them all in order. So after you know the shelf that I have over here then it starts with then I just put the coloring book there because it fit the best there. And then I have, you know, Assassin's Quest, and then I have the entire Live Ship Traders trilogy. And then I have the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince, which you should totally read before you get to Tawny Man, which is why I put it there. I read it that way, and I had a better experience for it. A lot of people tend to say, like, oh, read it after um, Golden Fool. I'm like, no, 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 read it before Tawny Man completely because it's just better there. But anyway, then I have the Tawny Man trilogy, then the Rain Wilds books, and then last but not least, the Fitz and the Fool trilogy.
that's basically what I've got on my bookshelves. I've also got some like cute little figurines and like different bookends and cute little trinkets that I've put on my shelf too, but I felt like they didn't necessarily need any background information or whatever, so I'm not really talking about those. So basically, I just really just walked you through my bookshelf. I mean, basically the way that I typically organize my shelves is either by author or by series. So as I said, I have the entire Harry Potter series on its own shelf. It's by J.K. Rowling and it's all encompassed in the same series. And then I have my Tolkien shelf, which is literally just all of his works kind of in the same place. I really think that a lot of other people's ideas for bookshelf, how they organize their bookshelves are really, really cool. But in terms of practicality for me, I am just not digging that. Like I love the fact that everyone does rainbow shelves, but I wouldn't be able to find anything. I've always been more about either the author, but also by genre. So it's like I put all of the same author in the same section, but then I put all of, let's say, fantasy books together in a same section on my bookshelf. Like my bookshelf here is the one like that I literally just walked you through. 95% of it is fantasy. But um, when I get bigger bookshelves, in theory, when I go to our new house, I'm going to probably attempt to do a bookshelf reorganizing so you can glean how I organize some other things. Like I have my little TBR shelf up above and then I kind of have my like miscellaneous shelf thing and then um, my book, like nostalgic books that I read. So I mean it's just it really varies on my mood but pretty much I try to do it either by uh, put them by genre and author. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. So as always, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media. I have a Twitter and a Goodreads, which are both linked below. And I also have other social media sites such as a second Twitter, a Tumblr, and an Instagram that's travel-centric if you'd like. And I will come back with another video for you guys again soon. Okay. Bye.